Hey guys, welcome to Power Stroke Boys. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a DIY vacuum tester at home for less than 100 bucks. Now, what is a vacuum tester? Well, this little guy is a diagnostic tool. You guys can use it to test such as front pump assemblies out of transmissions, valve bodies, accumulator bodies, things along those lines. You guys can see if you have an internal bleed on a certain orifice, or if you guys have a leaking valve, something along those lines. Alright you guys, so here's the parts list you're going to need. All the fittings I'm going to show you are quarter inch NPT. They can be sourced locally in the video description below, or you guys can go to your local hardware store and pick them up there as well. Alright, so you're going to need two quarter inch needle valves. Make sure they have a male to female thread so you don't have to stack couplers. Next, you're going to need a two inch gauge. This needs to be in vacuum. I like the glycerin filled as you guys can see here. Make sure it goes from 5 psi to 30 psi. So pick up a 45 degree elbow for the gauge. Next, you guys are going to need a, an aluminum manifold or a distribution block. I like these because they're aluminum design. They have holes pre-drilled so we can fasten it to our base plate you guys will see later in the video. Also, make sure you guys have five ports on your block. Next thing, you guys are going to need Teflon tape to seal all of our connections. You guys can use pipe dope, PTFE sealant, gasket maker, something along those lines. Next thing, you're going to need some quarter inch air hose. This is air hose that I have left over. As long as it's some type of quarter inch hose, you guys can use whatever you want. Next, you're going to need a Sonics test plate kit. You guys can see in front of you, here is our part. This was about 20 bucks. It's pretty cheap just to buy it instead of making your own. Next thing, you guys are going to need a quarter inch flare nut. You guys can see how the flare goes over one end of our DOT airline and the other end will go to our tester and I'll show you guys the connections and how to use it later in the video but there's the part number for the flare nut as well also you guys are going to need a couple quick disconnect fittings these are just straight fittings next thing you guys are going to need is one 90 degree elbow again in my design I decided to use that or you guys can use straight fittings as well next is optional you guys can use a piece of aluminum this is a piece of 5x5 scrap I had left over this is going to act as our base plate to mount to you guys are going to need a number 65 drill bit or a 35,000 micro drill bit. This is to drill a 35,000 orifice hole into our calibration nipple we're going to have to make. We're going to go ahead and take a quarter inch cap and drill into it on the very top. You guys can see we use that 35,000 drill bit we just mentioned to make our orifice. I'll explain that later. Also, you guys are going to need a vacuum pump. They're about 40 to 50 bucks on Amazon depending on where you guys get them. Again, I already had one, so this cost was nothing to me. And also, you guys can rent them at your local parts store, so technically it is free. All right, you guys, you've seen all the parts we need. Let's go ahead and assemble our vacuum tester. So you guys already saw this plate earlier in the video, but I went ahead and added four little rubber feet to the bottom. You can get these cheap off Amazon. This is a 40 pack, I believe, for like $4. So we just added one foot per corner, just so when we set this thing down, it doesn't slide all over the place, okay? So we have our two needle valves, we have our 45 degree fitting, we have our gauge, and we have our manifold. We have our two quick disconnect fittings, okay? Then also, you guys saw earlier in the video, we have our flexible airline, we have our flexible quarter inch nylon tubing here, and also we have our quarter inch flare fitting, so it can't slide off. So my layout, we're going to have both fittings like this, and then the gauge will be on the top with a 45 quick disconnect or a quick push fitting on one side and then we'll have a 90 or a straight on this side i haven't decided the layout yet but i do have an extra straight fitting but that's as simple as it's going to be just like that so we'll have the two needle valves the gauge will have our vacuum in and then we'll have our test line that goes out to actually draw a vacuum in pause the video you guys remember how i said earlier make sure your manifold has five ports well after editing this video, I totally realized I didn't specify this, so that's why we're doing this voiceover. These blocks only have three ports, and I told you five just so you have an extra one to cap it off. We're going to go ahead and drill one of these manifolds to have four ports. Two in the side, one in the top, one in the back. I'll explain that later in the video. Just be warned, you guys need at least four ports. That's why I said make sure it has five, so you don't have to do this extra step that I made a boo-boo on. And then obviously you guys are thinking, well, you guys need a test orifice. You need a reference point to calibrate the gauge. So now how do we calibrate this? Well, you have your vacuum side and you have your bleed side. So we had to set the vacuum side to five PSI of vacuum. Then we have to set our bleed side to 25 PSI. Now, how do we do that? Now, obviously we're making a sealed box. You guys have to make yourself a little test orifice. Okay, or a little test piece you guys can see. This is a, another quick disconnect fitting into a quarter inch brass cap and I drilled a 35 thousandths hole or a number 65 drill bit 
right through the top of it. Use a little Teflon tape. And what you'll do is you'll take, you'll take one end of your hose and you'll push in the quick disconnect fitting, okay? And then you obviously will set this and I'll show you guys how to do that on camera. Once you guys calibrate this, take your fitting off, set it to the side, set it back in your pelican case or your storage box, and then your whole unit is calibrated. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and start with is the easiest part of it. I believe, yep, so this is a 14 millimeter wrench on a gauge. We're gonna go ahead and stick our 45 degree fitting into a vise, and obviously we'll Teflon tape those together. Make sure you guys are orientating your gauge correctly. I want my 45 to be this way, I want the gauge to go up, okay? So we're going to need to assemble it just like that. All right, you guys, so I've got it clamped in the vise, start it by hand, again, using a 14 millimeter wrench in mine. And again, make sure you guys orientate the gauge correctly. You can see our gauge is nice and straight. All right, you guys, I've got our manifold clamped inside the vise, put some Teflon tape on the threads of our 45 degree elbow. We're gonna go ahead and just screw this down there. There's our gauge inside the manifold. All right, you guys, gonna go ahead, needle valves in, got the manifold clamped back in the vise. Let's go ahead, screw this in. You guys can see it's gonna be kind of close, but we should be able to just thread these in and clear the gauge using a 20 millimeter wrench. All right, you guys, I went ahead and put those fittings in off camera. You've guys seen me do this enough times in this video. There's no point in me wasting your time. All right, so we'll have the vacuum pump supply coming in and then we'll have our vacuum going out or our test line going out we have our orifice made again this is just a 35 thousandths hole number 65 drill bit attached to a quarter inch end cap with a quarter inch quick disconnect that'll be our test piece all right you guys so up to this point you've seen we completed the whole jig i went ahead and took it back apart just to show you guys now this is the original three-way aluminum block you can see this has three ports now this would work great but you guys are going to have to add in a, another bleed source we had the needle valve here, needle valve here, and a gauge on the top. Well, in order to have a vacuum, you have to bleed vacuum off to make a siphon, creating a vacuum, okay? Now, what you guys can do is, since I wanted this to be just a DIY, bolt together, screw together type deal, you can use one of these T-blocks, or these T-fittings, okay? It's just a quarter inch all the way around. You can see it's female, female, one end. So you could put the needle valve in line with this so realistically you just are using that you're using one side of the t to make a exit hole now i didn't like having that fitting now what you guys could do is this is an alternative here this was a, one of my original designs i did this is a five port you can see it has one two three four five okay now i had the gauge here i had the needle valves in the front then i had two quick disconnect fittings on either end but I had a cap one side. I just didn't like the look of this anodized aluminum. I didn't like how skinny it was. I like big blocky aluminum like this. It's just appealing to me, okay? So I really wasn't you know, happy with this design. So I kept that to the side and I wanted to use this block. And obviously with this T-fitting, it would work. If you guys don't care about cosmetics, just simplicity, it works, it works. I like to go a step above. So I went and I drilled and tapped one of these blocks. And now the cool thing about this design is again just cosmetics i'm just like that so you'll have the gauge in the top and so our actual port that pulls a vacuum will be on the back which will be a really nice clean design all right you guys that's a wrap to building your own vacuum tester at home for less than 100 bucks part two or the second video i'm going to upload i'm going to split it up into two different videos just for simplicity's sake so this video we built the vacuum tester the second video or the follow-up video to this is going to be how to calibrate this and how to use it so make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for that video but anyways this is what the finished product looks like mine that i still have to jb weld it to the plate so just have some imagination here flare fitting that we got this connects to the vacuum pump this runs into the side this is our vacuum needle and this is our bleed needle and then on the back side as you guys notice i pointed both the airlines toward the back since it looks nice and cleans things up this is going to be our vacuum line going to our Sonic test plate, which you guys saw earlier in the video on a quick disconnect fitting. So I went ahead and drilled and tapped it, which that will plug into this guy here. All right, and then we have our rubber grommet that'll go on the bottom of that. And then that's basically our setup in a nutshell. So we have our vacuum port, we have our tester, we have our needle adjustments, and then we need to go ahead and just adjust it. But again, I'll show you guys how to calibrate that in the next video. So, thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.